visto? So hi, um, this is our project. Uh, don't worry about the uh, the jargons in the title. We'll explain them later. And that's the end. It's not the beginning, you know. Go on to the next slide. So for people who are not into deep learning, uh, here are some situations as for why we're doing this project. So first, what is deep learning and why we're using it? Uh, it's basically the same uh, artificial neural network, but it's bigger and deeper. And now it's able to represent much more complex features and concepts. But one major problem of during the 90s was that the uh, backpropagation, the main technique used to train such a network, often gets stuck in local minimum. And turn out the deeper you go, the worse you get. But now we know unsupervised learning techniques such as restricted Boltzmann machine, or RBM there, uh, can help solve this problem by giving you a better initialization point. The next question is, why using convolution? It's basic for efficiency. Just like human eyes has a uh, local receptive field, our network has locally connected neurons, basic kernels. Therefore, we have the convolution neural network, or CNN. Our work is in uh, developing techniques to combine the convolution neural network, uh, convolution RBM, with the uh, CNN, so that gets much better results. Next slide. And this slide shows a demonstration of our system uh, the bottom three layers, L0 to L2, have two operations, the convolution and max pooling. The, the thickness of the block uh, shows the number of kernels, which is library here, and the cross-section can be considered as feature maps. Uh, the unsupervised pre-training goes from bottom to top, uh, and training is done without the MLP at the end. The training is done in a greedy fashion, which means we train one layer at a time. Once we're done, we compute the output, and use that the input to the next uh, layer. Once we're done with the pre-training, we hook up the, the MLP at the end with, and we flatten out the, the last layer and we train the whole thing as a uh, supervised refinement. Um, so in, in, uh, in, tradi in general, we need to do max pooling after doing convolution in CNN because a good mask can make the output become sparse. However, the problem here is that the output of RBM does not need to be sparse, so we need a new new technique so that the output would be, have, has at most one uh, largest response. So instead of adding a sparse penalty, we use a new technique called probabilistic max pooling. We, ma we map the old, uh, the old probability, which is the output of RBM, to a new probability. And the mapping is a little bit like comparing the, the, uh, the value in at each uh, in each uh, node to the uh, to the soft max of all of the whole block. So after getting the, uh, this new probability, we do sampling based on that and get copies of uh, of binary outputs, and then do traditional max pooling based on this mat, uh, based on these uh, copies. And here are some results. Uh, in table one, the top row, uh, the table one is for the means data set, which is our uh, handwritten digits. Uh, the first row is our naive implementation of the CN or next five without any unsupervised learning. And the second row is the, uh, the paper where the CRBM was proposed, but the author did not use any uh, supervised uh, fine tuning. So the final results classifier was using SVM, and the, the weights are not changed at all. And at the bottom is our uh, results, which is better, slightly better than everything else. At the bottom is a more challenging set, the cipher 10. Uh, the second row uh, is the, right now the best performing standalone convolution neural now. Uh, and our result is slightly better than the uh, uh, another coding method. And on the right, we show the learned kernel of the bottom layer. Intuitively, you see some uh, edge detectors. You know, they're the very low level features. Thank you. So your, your interest comes